On the next note, I want to talk about Trump because he's in Brussels, or he was in Brussels, Belgium, I believe, talking to NATO. And this is what Trump really cares about. People could say race, religion, gender, blah, blah, blah. You know, you've had your opinion. You've had two years to share tens of thousands of articles about what you think Trump cares about. Now is my turn. I think Trump loves America and I think Trump loves business and I think Trump loves deal making and I have a lot more proof of that uh, than his haters do. He's been on Oprah, he's been on Stephen King, he's been, I, I don't know, not Stephen King, I'm sorry, Larry King. He's been all over the media for 30 plus years, ranting and raving, taking out full newspapers, putting his own money to take out newspapers to say America, what are you doing? What are you doing with Europe? You're spending billions of dollars to join these coalitions where you're protecting these other countries. You're protecting Japan. You're protecting Germany. It's your protection and they're not paying you. Not only are they not paying you for your protection, you're paying them. To put it in other terms, it's like a, say you hired a security guard for you know a music venue, but instead of paying the security guard, you're, I'm sorry, uh, you know, it's like you're paying them for what you're doing. They're like, hey, we need you to be the security guard. Now give us $10,000. You're like, why am I paying you to work? That's essentially what the United States is doing. The deal is just lopsided. If you look at it, we have a lot of leverage. We have the biggest military in the world. Uh, we have a huge GDP. There's a lot of stuff that we're doing trade-wise, and we don't really get it in, uh, we don't get any reciprocal results. We pay to do stuff for other people, and Trump, whether you agree or disagree, this is what he's cared about forever. Before the race, before the religion, before the gender, before all of these mainstream media talking points to basically mentally do people into feeling victimized so they're scared and vote a certain way, this is literally the core of what Trump cares about. Even more than a lot of stuff domestically, he's been ranting about this stuff for 30 years. So he finally got in front of EU and he's literally said the same, they're like, or I'm sorry, in front of NATO, excuse me. And they're like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe he said that. John Kerry's putting out statements. Chuck Schumer's like, don't talk to Russia. I mean, how are you surprised that he said this? He's been saying it for 40 years, so he finally got the chance to do it in front of uh, NATO. And to, to keep it clear too, I'm going to quote Jill Stein, Green Party, before I get called a fascist or anything. I'm, qu I'm quoting a far-left progressive. Uh, when it comes to Russia, NATO has... Um, revolt, I'm sorry, has, you know, went against every single treaty that they've ever signed. They said they wouldn't cross this line, they wouldn't do this, they wouldn't do that. The United States and NATO has always, uh, maybe not every single treaty, but most of them, they have broken. So you want to talk about the wars and, you know, a lot of leftist people, liberals or progressives, they say, oh my God, this and that. NATO has not really, you know, led up to their bargain on the warmongering stuff too, between NATO and EU and the and um, you know all all of the three organizations that link us with Europe, they've literally caused a refugee crisis in Libya and Syria. They've destabilized these two countries. They you know wanted to get rid of Saddam Hussein and get rid of this leader and get rid of that leader, but they had no real plan to back it up. So we're tied into these agreements that we're paying too much for. We're not getting anything in reciprocation. And we're literally getting like a, a foreign government telling us you have to do this stuff. It's like we're not, we're supposed to be the United States. Yes, we can have deals with other countries, but the fact that they're like forcefully, you have to take these refugees that we basically created, there's nothing good uh, going on with, with the EU, uh, with uh, NATO, and the other one. I'm forgetting the name of the three, you know, things were tied into Europe. So Trump has a lot of problems with them, and that's fine. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to debate have a conversation, say, hey, let's try to make a better deal. That's what Trump's been wanting to do for 50 years. He's doing it today, trying to get more money and more stuff for the United States as opposed to just giving out all our money, giving out all our protection and getting nothing, really nothing in return, but forcefully them trying to jam refugees down our throat that they themselves created. If they stop destroying people's countries, there will be no refugees and people can just live in their own countries. But they destroy the country, blame Trump, call him racist for not wanting to take in a bunch of people that don't even need to be here in the first place. So overall, I think it's great that he's doing that. And you could just look at the reaction to Trump talking about NATO. He basically said very simple things. Germany, he also called out Germany for doing, I believe 70%, correct me if I'm wrong, 70% of their oil deals with Russia. So this is once again, it's too far past, I don't even know if you would call it irony, but hypocrisy, you could call it for sure. You have 
the Obama administration, the Clinton administration, and the Democrats of the last year, the Republicans who worked with the Democrats on these bills, you know, your John McCain's and your Mitt Romney's and all that, they're so mad at Trump saying, oh my God, I think he's working with Russia. And he's saying, if we're working with Russia, why are you doing 70% of your oil deals with Russia? You don't have to do it with Russia. You could do it with us. You can do it with another country. You're working with Russia. Literally, we're paying you all this money. We're giving you protection. And then you go and do a deal with Russia. That's what he said. And they're like, oh, and it's true. I mean, you look at the Obama and Clinton administration, one way or another, whether they received backdoor deals or not, a lot of evidence, and I'm not quoting a conspiracy website just so YouTube doesn't take this video down. I'm quoting uh, the New York Times who said that Hillary Clinton received over $100 million in backdoor funds to her campaign when the United States gave 20% of their uranium to Russia, okay? Obama signed off on it, Hillary signed off on it, Mueller was on the tarmac, you know, now he's the lead of the law. He was on the tarmac giving them a sample of uranium. Very, very sketchy deal when we know we have information that Russia wanted to corner the uranium, uranium market. If they're our big enemy, why did our past administration sell 20% of the United States uranium to them? And then you have video footage of Obama caught on a hot mic whispering to the guy from Russia being like, hey, buddy, when I'm out, out of president, I'll have a lot more flexibility to you know, pass the message on. I mean, all the collusion of Russia, you could, you could say it's in Germany's favor. You could say it's in Obama and Clinton's favor. All the real evidence is that, it, uh, is that it's they're colluding with Russia. If anything, they're selling uranium to Russia. Crimea got annexed under the Obama administration. Trump has been harder. As far as his rhetoric, he's been kinder. But once again, actions matter more than words. He's been harder on Russia than anyone else has in the past eight years. And he's literally calling out, Germany, you're the ones working with Russia selling all your stuff to them. Why don't you work with us? But it doesn't matter because like Billy Joe Armstrong said, uh, one nation controlled by the media. If the media says it enough times, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Uh, quoting B.O.B., the late great rapper B.O.B., who's still alive. I don't know why I said late great. He said, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. It don't take a genius to pick up the pieces. You know, talking about how the media just repeats things and repeats things until people believe it. They've said that Trump has worked with Russia so many times. It's literally brainwashed and mind controlled people from reality, which is the past administration worked with Russia more than we did. Germany is primarily working with Russia on oil deals and Trump has never colluded with Russia. They don't have a single piece of evidence. In fact, all the evidence leads that they themselves planted fake evidence in Yahoo News and other publications to then bring to the FISA courts on a dossier that they themselves funded. So the whole thing is a total setup but once again, the truth doesn't matter. Reality doesn't matter when you have tens of millions of people who will march in the street based on something that they didn't even know existed two weeks ago. You know, they're so outraged about something that they didn't even know existed a week ago because the media tells them to be. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Snapchat, they all say, go out and march, go out and march. You know, LGBT, gay, straight, transgenders, you got it. And they're like, yay, we hate guns, we hate Russia. They don't even know why or what's going on or what happened to Russia. They don't know that NATO's, NATO's broke every treaty against Russia. They don't know that Germany's selling their oil and gas to Russia. They don't know that the past administrations have sold uranium to Russia. None of this matters, uh, but luckily we have Trump there to call it out. And it's nice to see somebody in our president situation that instead of, it's like the whole plot has been twisted. It's, it's hard to talk about because it's so much information at once, it almost makes your head want to explode. But it's like Trump's the first president in recent modern history that actually cares about America a lot. He got in there and he said, America first. I'm going to put America over the EU. I'm going to put America over NATO. I'm going to put America over the United Nations. You know, all of these, you're, I'm going to... I'm going to prioritize America because America's not getting anything out of it. They're trying to legislate. You have to take these refugees that we created. You have to deal with these wars that we started. Like that's what they're doing. They're not helping us really anymore. I'm sure at a certain point it was beneficial, but it's getting past the point of being passive. You need someone in there that has some cojones that says, hey, enough is enough. We don't have to leave completely but if they you know we got to use leverage like this is our money this is our military that's how you get a deal you don't if you have an agent or a manager you don't say oh you know what i'm gonna work for free you know what here take all my money i'm gonna take an acting gig instead of you paying me twenty thousand i'll give you a hundred thousand dollars and then someone's like hey why don't you stand up for yourself you're a famous actor you have all these credits why don't you use that as leverage and 
Go get some money for yourself. And oh my God, oh, he's crazy. Oh my goodness, he's standing up for himself. That's so weird. We're used to fake politicians who just sell us out, sell our country out to Russia, sell our country out to China. I mean, half of our media organizations are already being bought by China. That's why you don't hear about it in the news because they own the news. They own Legendary Pictures, which created 300 and Batman Returns and all of these. You know, it's owned by, uh, you know, Legendary Pictures owned by China. Uh, a lot of news organizations are owned by Saudi Arabian billionaires. You want to talk about foreign collusion? Saudi owns half of our tech companies, you know? China owns a lot of media and, and uh, film entertainment. And Qatar and BBC are, you know, funded by, I'm sorry, um, Al Jazeera is funded by Qatar. That's literally the whole Al Jazeera. You see it. It's a progressive and liberal favorite. It's a state-owned organization by the country of Qatar. You have BBC is state-owned by uh, Canada. I'm, I'm sorry, by, the, by um, Great Britain or the UK. So the, everything has shifted. They say Trump's colluding with other countries. Oh my God, Trump's standing up for the United States. He must be working with Russia. Oh yeah, what a great Russian plot they had. We, we, we hate the United States so much. We want all their citizens to have guns and we want them to get better trade deals and have a good economy and stop getting ripped off. Oh yeah, that's totally what Russia wants is, is us to like be prosperous and be successful and not get ripped off. It's the complete opposite. Trump is the first politician and president in a long time who's standing up for the U.S. No one's ever said anything like that because they've been frail pushovers who haven't cared about, they don't care. Oh, the U.S. gets, they're getting their pockets lined. They're getting paid by Goldman Sachs. They're getting paid by the pharmacy industry. They're getting paid by Monsanto. They're getting paid by multiple organizations, by pharmaceutical lobbyists. So no other president has ever been like, hey, let me get 15 billion back for the U.S. They didn't care. They're like, I don't, Trump is losing money. He's not owned by the pharmacy industry. He's not owned by Monsanto. He's not owned by the military industrial complex. Any military move he makes, whether it be right or wrong, is a move that he feels is right and general mattis he's not he's not kowtowing to the military industrial complex either you might not agree with a certain move he makes but there's a thought process behind that it's not just selling the country out so i'm so tired of uh you know news organizations trying to say that he's colluding with foreign countries when he's the first president that's not colluding with co corporations and countries he's doing what's in the best interest of the united states so overall it's great to see President Trump out there shaking things up with NATO, shaking things up in the United Nations, and shaking things up with EU because it's a shakeup that he himself has been advocating for for 30, 40 years. And he's taken out full page ads in newspapers, you know, in the 80s and 90s to talk about this exact stuff. So he's finally there. He's loving it. Like McDonald says, I'm loving it. Uh, and let him, let Trump be Trump, you know, let him do his thing. If you don't like him, vote and find somebody that you like better but you're probably not going to find someone that's going to do the dirty work like trump is and i'm not talking about in a negative way i'm talking about like go to the swamp go in the grimiest uh situations in the world and really break it up he's doing a lot of good and freeing up so much stuff for future politicians to come god bless donald trump and all of his haters they don't care what he does they don't care if it's water or deals or they just want to oppose him. They want to make him bad. John Kerry is so appalled. He has to write a whole press conference. Oh my goodness. Donald Trump is so bad because he's literally using the leverage that the United States has to try to get better deals for the United States so they're not paying billions of dollars and getting nothing in return. What a horrible person. For Okay, John Kerry, no one wants to listen to your deal making. Okay, bro, no offense, but we... We got President Trump. He's a better deal maker. He's probably one of the best deal makers in 21st century. The world is a business, whether people like it or not. I'm not saying that humanity and compassion doesn't exist, but when it comes to politics, it's literally all money and deals and organizations and literally billions and billions of dollars on the line. So yes, we have President Trump. We're gonna listen to him. He's the president, not your little fake statement like, oh my God, President Trump's better at deal making than I'll ever be, so I'm gonna act upset because I'm gonna try to get votes in November. Yeah, great, cool story, no one cares. Keep going, President Trump. Do what you gotta do with the EU, do what you gotta do with NATO, and do what you gotta do with the United Nations. We're glad to have a president that actually does something, besides the people that are mind controlled by the media. They, of course, are gonna be outraged and act offended and find some sort of negative Russia spin on it, even though he's calling out Russia and he's the only president in modern history that hasn't been doing massive deals with Russia. And I can't wait till he talks to Putin because 
he's going to get along with Putin. He's going to strike a better deal with Putin. And this whole setup, this whole time, has been to try to avoid that. Russia is not controlled by the globalists. They're not controlled by NATO. They're not controlled by EU. Trump is not controlled by EU, the globalists. Anybody that's not controlled, they have to hate on. If a president, regardless of how good they are, they want control. They don't care about the LGBT community. They don't care about black people. They don't care about Latinos or illegal immigrants. They want control. And if you're not a puppet, you don't get good press. If you're going to be a puppet and kowtow to what they want you to do, you'll get good press. So Trump doesn't get good press because he's not doing that. Putin doesn't get good press because he's not doing that. They have a plot there to basically... They want to control everything that Trump does. When it comes to the North, North Korea, they have to put out all this crazy press around it because hopefully they could corner Trump and then make him do what they want him to do. Same with Russia. They're making it impossible to get along with certain countries because if you do get along and do strike a deal, oh my God, Trump's working with a dictator. Oh no, Trump did a peace deal with North Korea and they're gonna denuclearize. Oh my goodness, that's so terrible. He's working with terrorists. That they, they have a way to control everything via media manipulation. So they're, they're priming this all up for the meeting with Putin. And Chuck Schumer's already saying, oh no, Trump isn't allowed to meet with Putin in private. Even though there's Obama on a hot mic saying, hey, when I'm out of president, I, you know, let's meet and we could talk. I'll have more flexibility. I mean, imagine if Trump did that. Imagine if Trump sold uh, uranium to Russia. Imagine if Trump did what Germany did and started selling a bunch of gasoline to Russia. I mean, it's just ridiculous. All you have to do is look at reality and look at basic both sides to see who's lying. But, you know, for that, you'd have to put your bias and your emotions and your preconceived notions aside, which is something that a lot of people don't want to do. But overall, it's nice to see Trump uh, striking some deals and being a little tough. You got to be a little tough. If you're too nice, you get taken advantage of.